Good afternoon, this is T.H. Culhane for Solar Cities, and today I'd like to describe how we insulate solar hot water and compost hot water tanks that we make and give you an idea of some of the pitfalls we went through and then some of the solutions that we came up with when we were working in Cairo, Egypt. This is our backyard in Germany and we're continuing to explore different ways to simplify and lower the cost of renewable energy systems at the household level. Just like to start by saying that when I was in high school in the 1970s, the mantra was that solar hot water or any kind of renewable energy hot water suffered from a problem that you had to store it overnight and it lost all its heat. And there were elaborate uh, discussions about the need to put all sorts of salts in your basement, which would take an enormous amount of space just to store that heat so that you could take a hot shower at 6 in the morning or 8 in the morning and that most people who used solar hot water had to use that hot water at the end of the day or lose it. Uh, that was the myth that was perpetuated and those of us who lived in cities and urban environments and had no experience with solar hot water tended to believe what we heard. And it wasn't until I was an adult working on my PhD in Cairo and started building my own solar hot water systems that I realized that this was just a myth. That in fact, if you took even a plastic tank like this one that we experimented with here in Germany before we went down to Cairo, and you insulated it with styrofoam, then you kept the heat of the water within 5 to 10 degrees of the temperature that it went in at the end of the day the following morning. That is to say that if I had 50 degree water in the tank at 6 o'clock in the evening on a Friday, then Saturday morning by 6, 7 in the morning, I was still only down to about 40 degrees, which is a very comfortable bath. And in the winter time, when you had a full day's sun and you got 40 degrees in the tank, then by the morning time, you were down to somewhere between 30 and 35 degrees, depending on how much you had insulated. And 32 degrees is fine for a warm bath or a warm shower. So this cheap way of insulating a tank and uh, using plastic recycled barrels became the system that we worked with in Cairo in the poor areas for providing reliable solar hot water. The way that we generally did it is we took our plastic tank, usually we used a 200 liter tank, but this is just a model example using a 60 liter tank, and we started out by wrapping it with aluminum foil uh, because you have electromagnetic radiation heat, which is a form of light, and it reflects then back into the tank, or so the theory goes. And then we put a layer of bubble wrap around it because air is a good insulator. And then we took scrap pieces of insulation that were very cheap that have bubbles in it and put that around. That again is like using the bubble wrap. And then we went around with the styrofoam. But what we did wrong in the old days is we tended to build boxes around the solar hot water system. And while the box worked really well, it actually was difficult for several reasons. One, to seal the box, we were using this foam spray. I don't know if you can see the dried up foam here, but those cans of foam spray to hold the box together, they're very expensive and they're very messy, they're toxic, and uh, when you get them on your clothes, you ruin your clothes forever. You can't wash it out. When you get it on your skin, it can cause days of misery as you try to scrape it off of your skin. If you've ever worked with those foam sprays, you have to wear gloves, you have to wear goggles. If it gets in your eye, as almost happened to me, uh, it can cause severe damage and blindness. Luckily, all it did is glue my eyelid shut, but it was very uh, difficult uh, uh, getting that off. So the foam spray was always a nightmare for us. And we were trying to think, is there a better way to insulate than making a box? The other thing about the box is then you have to poke your holes for your piping uh, at the right time, or you have to make two pieces and fit them together over the pipe. What we learned over time was that the simplest way to insulate the barrel was in fact not to build a box, that would seem like the simplest way, but to actually make strips of styrofoam and then glue them around. Now the first way we did that is we made strips of styrofoam 10 centimeters wide for the 200 liter tank and we took flour and water as a glue, a cheap glue, and then pasted it temporarily on so that we could then get our foam spray and then spray between. 
but again that was using the foam spray and it used a lot of foam spray. Now what we've learned is the best way to go about this, the cheapest way and the most reliable way is to use stretch wrap or cling wrap, the kind of stuff that they use at airports to go around luggage or that pallets are wrapped in. Today the only thing the store had, this is from a decoration shop, they get it from Office Depot, and the only kind they had was the black color. Um, we generally use the clear color, but it doesn't matter. The idea is that stretch wrap makes it very easy to hold the styrofoam onto the barrel, and I'll show you that right now. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take apart this old box, and actually will conserve a lot of styrofoam. The old experimental box. I'll put this on its side, and you can see it's about the size of a barrel of the barrel. And then I'm going to cut it into strips. Now, the diameter of this barrel on the inside is 40 centimeters, and the circumference, therefore, 2 pi r, where 2 r is the diameter, 40, 40 times 3.14, which is pi, is 126.5. No, I didn't do that in my head. I used the calculator just before I turned on the camera. But 126 centimeters around, and we're going to then put strips to go around that that we make of this. So the first thing we'll do is we'll try to see what size of a strip of styrofoam uh, would fit if we were to go around. This is a bit of calculus, actually, but we won't use calculus. We're using segments, straight segments, and approximating curve. So we don't want to go too big because then we'll leave a lot of airspace. One of the problems using this was you see the amount of airspace that was around the barrel when it was inside this way. It's not that the heat was lost, but rats in Cairo tended to get in. In Hanafati's place in Cairo, before we used the strips around tightly around the tank, he had his tank insulated with a box like this. Rats loved the warmth there, there during the winter, and they burrowed their way in and made their nest inside there. Eventually ate up a lot of the styrofoam and they ate up a lot of the rubber pipes and uh, polypropylene pipes that we were using, causing leaks and little disasters. So you don't want this open area where rats and other vermin can nest. So we are going to use on this eight centimeter strips. That seems like that'll work out. We normally use 10 for the 200 liter barrels, but eight for the 60 liter barrels seems like it will work without doing too much cutting. I want to make them too small, even though that would be more efficient perhaps. It would take a lot more time. Uh, so eight centimeter strips, and since it's 126.5 centimeters, the calculator says that 126.5 divided by eight is 15.8, or roughly 16 strips we're going to cut out of this in order to make our system. You may be wondering why is this guy spending so much time and effort trying to recycle old styrofoam? Styrofoam is cheap, right? Well, actually here in Germany styrofoam is not cheap. Uh, one block packet costs about 15 euro, which is about $17. Uh, so it's not cheap, but in places like Cairo, in places uh, in Africa where we work, not only is styrofoam not cheap, but because it's fragile and it comes in big sheets, one usually has to rent a truck in order to get it back home. You can't take it in a taxi, you can't uh, take it on foot, it's just too bulky to carry these sheets of styrofoam. And renting a truck costs a lot of money. So generally what we try to do is recycle as much styrofoam as we can and when we purchase styrofoam make each purchase go a long way so we only have to purchase once. So that's why we're going out of our way to conserve styrofoam. It's, uh, it can be a deal breaker for the very poor with whom we work and we want this to be very cost effective so that any family can do this and have reliable hot water.